Hello friends, welcome to UGC EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Deepshikha Sharma from Department of Geography, Ragnath Girls Postgraduate College of Merit. Today I am going to elaborate upon dry climates, semi-arid and arid, which come under the paper climatology. After studying this module, you will be able to distinguish between semi-arid and arid climate, understand the various characteristic feature of the semi-arid grasslands of the world, find out the relationship between the growth of grasslands and the human activities. Explain the role of relief features as a barrier in the formation of a desert land and discuss the adaption of vegetation and animals in the arid climate, meaning of the dry climates. The climates where evaporation exceeds precipitation faces scarcity of water, it happens due to more temperature, high temperature increases the capacity of the air to hold water. Therefore, more evaporation and transpirations are initiated. This reduces the amount of moisture in the soil and causes the retardation in the growth and development of vegetation in that region. The primary characteristic of a dry climate is low and unpredictable precipitation, less than 70 centimeter per year. If the amount of rain is less than 35 centimeter, it is called desert and when the precipitation varies from 35 to 70 centimeter, it is categorized as a semi-arid. Another characteristic of the dry climate is more coefficient of rainfall variability with great seasonal as well as daily range of temperature. These climates are divided into two types on the basis of annual precipitation that is dry desert climate and semi-arid climate. The term B refers for xerophyte type of vegetation. In another words, capital B refers to desert type of climate. The term W is used for the land which is almost of no use economically. In another words, it is a wasteland. The dry desert climate is further classified on the basis of annual temperature. When the mean annual temperature is more than 18 degree centigrade, the climate is considered to be hot and it is termed as H letter. When annual mean temperature is less than 18 degree centigrade, it is shown by K letter which means cool. In this way, Dry climates are divided into four subtypes, BWH that is tropical hot desert climate, BSH tropical semi-arid steppe climate, BWK mid latitude cold desert climate and BSK mid latitude cold steppe climate. Out of the four climatic divisions mentioned here to BWH and BWK belong to the arid and the other two BSH and BSK to semi-arid climates. Semi-arid climates are the areas receiving mean annual rainfall between 35 to 70 centimeter come and these areas come under the category of semi-arid climate. These climates are depicted through the group of let letters BSH and BSK, where BS stands for semi-arid, H for hot and K for cold. BSH climates uh, are found in the belt of dry trade winds and subtropical anticyclones. BSK climates are confined to the anticyclonic conditions uh, just, uh, such as temperate steppe. By cold anticyclones during winter season. Hot semi-arid climates are located bordering a humid subtropical or tropical savanna climates depending upon the amount of rain. These climates are hot, sometimes extremely hot with warm to cool winter and minimal precipitation. 
the middle latitude steppe climate that is BSK is extended over the vast temperate grasslands providing ideal conditions for grazing grounds and the related economic activities. Temperate grasslands are located in the interiors of the continent in the northern hemisphere. These areas are in the westerly wind belts yet they do not get sufficient rainfall in the southern hemisphere. These grasslands are located along the southeastern margins of the continent with more moderate climate because of the marine influence. These grasslands are known with different names in the different areas of the world. In Europe, these are known as steppes extending more than 3200 kilometers from the shore of Black Sea to the foothills of Altai mountains with broken continuity at few places by the highlands. Some isolated patches of these grasslands are known as Pustas in Hungary and Manchurian grasslands in plains of Manchuria. These grasslands in North America are known as prairies which extend from Canada to USA and from foothill of Rockies in the west to the margins of deciduous forest in the east. In the southern hemisphere, these grasslands are known as pampas in Argentina and Uruguay uh, that is in South America, bush wilds and high weld in the South Africa, dawns in Murray Darling basins of southern Australia and Canterbury grasslands in New Zealand. The distribution of the semi-arid and arid climate is shown in figure 1. The temperate grasslands are influenced by the continental effect. These areas are warm in the summer days but experience very cold condition during winter. The average maximum temperature at Winnipeg that is in Canada is as high as about 25 degree centigrade in the summer but the same place is about minus 25 degree centigrade during winter. The annual range of temperature is around 50 degree centigrade which is very high. The excessive low temperature in winter is due to continental type of climate. These areas are far away from the moderating effect of coastal areas. The semi-arid areas of southern hemisphere is relatively low annual range of temperature. It is because of narrower land mass in the southern hemisphere, hence effect of ocean is a bit more. The diurnal range of temperature is more in this climate. The monthly maximum and minimum temperature is recorded at Winnipeg, Canada is presented in the figure 2. A big departure in these figures are very much perceivable. Temperate grasslands receive most of its annual rainfall during summer season and some amount of winter precipitation is received in northern hemisphere usually in form of snowfall. The mean annual rainfall here ranges between 35 centimeter to 70 centimeter with a marked regional variation. Eurasian steppe climate occupies the largest areas of all the grasslands. It receives mean annual precipitation ranging from 30 to 60 centimeter. <coughs> this area is grouped into four different divisions. These are forest steppes. Medo uh, forest steppe 50 to 60 centimeter, Medo steppe 35 to 50 centimeter and the other two areas are grass and xeromorphic steppe where the precipitation ranges from 30 to 35 centimeter. Similarly, the trend of mean annual precipitation in North American prairies range between 40 to 105 centimeter west to east in three sub regions that is short grass prairies, mixed prairies and tall grass prairies. 
the monthly mean temperature and the precipitation at <coughs> Williston, USA and Monterey, Mexico is shown graphically in the figure 3. The Pampas of South America receive mean annual precipitation ranging between 45 centimeter in the west to 90 centimeter in the eastern coastal land. So, the Pampas is divided into two subdivisions, humid Pampas and subhumid Pampas. There is a marked variation and uncertainty of rainfall in the African wells where mean annual range of precipitation varies from 20 centimeter to 60 centimeter with the frequent drought conditions due to increasing aridity, severity of frost at nights, high range of daily temperature and uncertainty of rainfall. The growth of plants is not sustaining, therefore primarily grassland have developed in these areas. The grasses are almost dried up in the few lean months and again regenerate when the moisture is re regained by the soil. <coughs> mean annual precipitation in the temperate grasslands of the Australian Dons range between 63 centimeter north to 152 centimeter south dividing the region into three sub regions temperate tall grassland temperate short grassland and xerophytic grasslands these grasslands gradually change from coast to northern interior land according to the decreasing trend of mean annual precipitation the most dominant species of vegetation in the temperate grassland are the perennial grasses mainly belonging to the graminae family of grasses which is considered to be the climax com community. This biome has herbaceous plants also with the cons conspicuous presence of trees and shrubs. There are two lines of thought about the evolution of temperate grasslands. First, it refers to the climatic condition and pedogenic properties. According to this approach, grasslands are the product of climatic components. Climatic components determine uh, uh, the uh, soil formation and soil which is which in turn supports the supports the vegetation cover depending on its capacity. Second approach considers that the development of grasslands are due to the excessive use of land by human being. In the beginning, it was slash and burn utilization of land which lead to the widespread destruction of existing forest. Now the land is under regular use of human being. The regrowth of the forest is not possible. Whatever may be the reason for the existence of grasslands, it exhibits very wide variation in terms of growth and development of the region. Eurasian steppes uh, or Russian steppes are divided into two subtype forest steppes and grass steppes. Forest steppes has alternate bands of woodland and open steppe. These intervening bands of open steppe are called Mido steppe. The European forest steppe have oak, lime, elms and maple trees whereas the Siberian part of these forest steppe have birch, aspen and willow trees. Further south of the forest and Mido steppes, grass steppe exists over the bed of true Chernozem soil, stipa are the most important member of the grass community of this region. Further southward of this belt, increasing aridity has transformed the true grass steppe into semi-arid steppe with xerophytic grasses, fescue and feather grasses along with few species of xerophytic and ephemeral herbs. Prairies of North America 
vegetation of North American temperate grasslands is divided into three subdivisions tall grass prairies, mixed grass prairies and short grass prairies. Tall grass region is dominated by blue stem and switch grass which attain to attain the height of 1.5 meter to 2 meter. This region also has few patches of oak and has hickory trees. Mixed prairies have variety of a little shorter 0.6 to 1.5 meter bunch grasses such as needle grass, needle blue stem, buffalo grass and blue grass. Short grass prairies are dominated by short grasses uh, nearly 60 centimeter in height and are in western part of the great plains. Pampas of South America, the uh, grasslands of South America, pampas also become shorter in the height in the western parts of the grassland by following the westward trend of the decreasing precipitation. Pampas are divided into two subtypes, humid pampas and subhumid pampas. Bryza, Bromus, Panicum, Pas Palum and Lolium are the important grasses of pampas. Leucrin plant legume which is of legume species is introduced here by human being which is a good herbage for animals. Original grasses in pampas have been cleared for agricultural farms mainly of wheat, maize and soybean. For the last 60 years these lands have been used in rotation for the grass and grain. Leguminous grasses like alfalfa fix the nitrogen loss into the soil and the land gets fertile again for the grain crops. African wells are grassy undulating plateaus varying in height from 150 to 2100 meter where cultivation cannot be done easily due to the non-supportive factors like uncertainty of rainfall increasing aridity, severe forest at forests, severe frosts at night and high daily range of temperature. On the basis of variations in topography, soils, altitude and climatic condition, wells biome is subdivided in three types, Thebeda weld, alpine weld and sore weld. Thebeda triandra that is uh, the word the word is red grass is the most dominant grass of this biome which is developed on black turf soil and is now transformed to less useful xerophytic forms of vegetation due to the continued pressure of overgrazing. The areas of Themeda well dominated by relatively less important grasses Aristida, Iragrostis and Hyperhenia are known as sore weld. Al Alpine weld are found at higher altitudes uh, that is between 1500 to 2100 meter of Darkensburg mountain where Festuca and Bromus grasses are mixed with Themeda grasses. All these grasses are developed on black soil. Australian dawns, the biomass of Australian dawns is divided into three distinct units with variation with the distribution of precipitation. They are temperate <coughs> they are temperate tall grasslands, temperate short grassland and xerophytic <coughs> grasslands. Tall grasslands have occupied from the eastern coast and New South Wales to Victoria and eastern Tasmania. They are dominated by Poa to Sock and Themeda Australia grasses. Drier part of this region is dominated by 
Denthonia pallida grass. Short grasslands are laying parallel to the tall grassland dominated by shorter species of grasses such as Denthonia strepa gegera. A view of vegetation in Australian dawns is visible through the figure 4. Canterbury grasslands of New Zealand has developed in the eastern part of southern island and the central part of northern island. Tassock bunch grass is the dominant species which has been transformed by human being over hundreds of years of economic activities. Now short tussock which is festuca and poa are tall by around 50 centimeter and have yellow to brown color. They are found on the higher grounds where tussock species are dominant grass. Animal community of temperate grassland <coughs> includes large mammals, large herbivores and the grazing mammals are main animal groups of the temperate grasslands. In spite of many similarities in animal community, they have significant variations. Eurasian steppes are dominated by sega antelope of the western parts and Mongolian grazel in the eastern lands. Eastern grasslands of Eurasia also have a rare species of wild ungulate horses having hoofs. Some burrowing animals like mole rats dig out long tunnels and remain inside during daytime. They come out of the tunnel at night in the search of food. Predators like wolves, eagles, large hawks, etc. depend on rodents for their food. Animal community in prairies is dominated by pronghorn and bison who are now at the verge of extinction due to the indiscriminate mass hunting by European immigrants. Rodents found here are gophers and prairies dog who used to live in tunnels to protect themselves from the predators during the day time. These rodents are now almost eliminated as a result of agricultural development. Hawks, eagles, rattlesnake, foxes, wolves are the main predators species of this region. These are also adversely affected by the agricultural activities in the region. Pampas of South America has been developed into major wheat grounds. Since natural grasslands are almost non-existent, the shelters for the animals are no more there. Many of them are on the verge of extinction and elimination. Pampa deer is the dominant grazing animal and rodent like Viscacha and Mara are burrowing species of these grasslands. Re of this region resembles emu of Australia and ostrich of Africa. It is a giant size bir bird which saves itself from its predator by becoming invisible in the surroundings. Band wolf is the predator animal here and depends on rodents, birds and small reptiles. Many migratory seasonal birds like herons, geese, ducks etc. also enrich these grasslands. Weld of South Africa have been very rich in animal population but now are largely affected by human activities. Carnivores such as hyenas, jackals, lions, leopard, herbivores like antelopes and zebra are the main animals of these grasslands. Most of the animals now are forced to seek refuge in other areas due to the conversation of grasslands into the farmlands. Original animals are now replaced by domesticated animals. Birds have escaped, only rodents hide themselves in the tunnels. Kangaroos are the dominant species of Australian dawns. These are of three types namely red kangaroos, 
grey kangaroos and wallaroos. Rabbits were introduced here by Europeans and they have now outnumbered the other animals. Sheep are domesticated here for commercial purpose. It has now again altered the composition of animal community. Emu is the large size bird species found in this region. Temperate grassland of New Zealand have almost no animal community due to its isolation from other land masses. Previously, a giant fightless bird known as the as moa used to inherit used to inhabit here, but now they are disappeared due to the large scale hunting. Temperate grassland and human interactions are dominated by human activities. Most of the areas have been turned into agricultural ecosystem. As a result, several ecological and environmental problems have emerged like extinction of species, overgrowth of few animals, suppression of native grasses, loosening of soil cover, generation of dust storm by the loosened soil cover and the extension of arid land. European steppes have played a role of Eurasian land bridge, silk route or steppe route for the trade activities. Agricultural activities in the western segment of steppe, steppes are done where wheat, grains, hay, sunflower, vegetables like beetroot, tomato and fruits suitable to grow in such climatic condition are grown. Eastern segment of these grasslands are almost untouched except some pastoral activities by the nomadic herders. Prairies of North America has been converted into modern granaries where wheat is mainly produced along with other crops such as rye, rye, oats, barley, canola, corn, soybean, peas, lentils, mustard, etc. Here agricultural activities are conducted in fully organized manner along with latest technology. Pampas of South America are also converted into modern agricultural farms, wheat, corn, soya, fodder crop, vegetables, etc. are grown here. The climate of these grassland is ideal for viticulture. That is why internationally acclaimed numerous wineries and vineyards have, been, have got the roots here. Cattle rearing is also one of the main human activity. Now it is shrinking day by day due to the domination of above mentioned other activities. Cattle rearing, dairy farming and mining are the main human activities in the world of Africa. Some agricultural crops namely maize, wheat, barley, oats, potato, sugarcane, tobacco and cotton are grown because of the soil of this region is suitable for the same. Merino sheep is bred here mostly whose wool is one of the best quality. Mining of coal, iron, gold and diamond is mainly done in this region. Well are known for its two main industries, wool and mining in the world. Australian dons are known for mining, agriculture and manufacturing industries. Mining of coal and natural gas is done here on a very large scale. Main agricultural products are vege uh, vegetables, legumes, cotton, wheat, barley and sorghum, pastures of beef and dairy cattle that is pig, sheep and lamb are developed. Wine plants are also developed by the grape cultivators. Canterbury grasslands of New Zealand are mainly rich pastoral lands where high quality agricultural products, wheat, barley and oats are produced. In these pastoral lands, sheep, dairy, cow, dairy cows, beef cattle and the deer are bred. The main sheep bred developed, the main sheep breed developed here are Romney, Corridale, Coopworth, Perendale, Merino, etc. Cows for milk products 
here are Holstein, Friesian and Jersey cross breeds and the main beef cattle breeds are Angus, Angus Friesian and Hereford cross, cross breeds. The climate is arid climate is characterized by the lack of water to the extent that growth and development of plant and animal life is hindered or prevented. This sort of areas come under the category of arid climate, termed as desert. Such areas receive less than 35 centimeter annual average rainfall. Arid climate is grouped into two hot and cold deserts based on the prevailing temperature conditions. The hot desert climate is found between the latitudinal extension of 15 degree to 35 degree in both the hemisphere and mostly on the western parts of the continents. They are Sahara and Kalahari deserts in Africa, Thar deserts of India and Pakistan, Arabian and Iranian deserts. Mosev and Arizona deserts in southwestern USA and Great Sandy, Great Victoria and Tanami desert of Australia. The cold desert climate is found in the rain shadow areas of the temperate zones. These deserts are usually found on the higher altitude than hot deserts. Some ideal examples of this climate are Patagonian Desert, Argentina, Gobi Desert, Mongolia, uh, Kizilkum, Taklamakan and the Katpana, Central Asia, Leh and Ladakh, Great Himalayan. World distribution of hot and cold deserts is given in figure 5. The subdivision of arid climate as per the Köppen climatic classification BWH and BWK are already discussed earlier. To delineate hot desert climate from cold desert climates, the isotherm of 18 degree centigrade mean annual temperature is most commonly used. The places above this temperature are classified as hot arid and below as cold arid. Annual distribution of temperature in the dry climate region of the world are two distinct seasonal summer, two distinct seasons, summer and winter. Average distribution of temperature during summer ranges from 30 degree centigrade to 35 degree centigrade, but midday temperature exceeds 40 degree centigrade. On 13th September 2012, the Guinness Book of World Record modified the high, highest, notified the highest recorded temperature of El Zizia, Libya, 58 degree centigrade to now Greenland ranches 56.7 degree centigrade, Death Valley, California, USA. Temperature in cold deserts remain warm in summer, but extremely cold during winter. The average temperature in this climate remain less than 10 degree centigrade. Annual and diurnal, both the temperature ranges quite high in the desert climate. Hot deserts are found in the areas of anti-cyclonic conditions of subtropical high. Descending air from above causes high pressure. It leads to compress, compressing of the air and warming, warming as well. Increasing temperature of the air increases the capacity of air to hold moisture. Therefore, the, instead of leaving moisture, the air extracts moisture from the areas, moisture from the air water body soil these conditions are the cause of happening of desert in the subtropical areas on the western coast of the continent cold current currents are prevailing they themselves are cold and the wind 
reaching the coast are cool. They do not have sufficient amount of moisture for ra raining. Another point with regard to the cool winter cool winds is that when they reach the western coastal land parts, the winds get warmed up due to the more temperature. That is the reason that the rainfall is not there and hence deserts are existing. People have been living in deserts since millennia. Tribes like Bushmen in Kalahari, Aborigines in Australia were originally hunter gatherers. Later, uh, later on they developed many skills such as animal tracking, finding water in deserts, manufacturing and the use of weapons etc. In other cultures, people are herders and have developed nomadic, nomadic ways of life. They move to new pastures with their goods, baggages and animals, sheep, goat, cattle, yak, llamas and reindeer. These nomads are traders and they are still dealing with ivory or gold items etc. This traditional means of overland transport have declined now. But caravans still travel along the ancient routes carrying salt from interior to desert edge communities. Apart from trade, other activities are natural resources extraction, farming, solar energy capture, wind energy generation and warfare etc. are also developed mainly in hot deserts. Many minerals such as gypsum, sodium nitrate, sodium chloride, borates, copper, iron, uranium along with salts, pumice, fossil oil and gas are extracted from the desert around the world. Farming has been an age old practice in some areas. Judean 600 BC, southwestern USA 600 AD of deserts. Today also agricultural activity is done through irrigation and crops like millets, bees, squash, pepper and sugarcane are grown here. In a nutshell, major determinants of the dry climates is the amount of rainfall which influences the vegetation and ultimately the animal and human life. The common characteristic of these climates are low precipitation, high evaporation rate and wide range of daily and annual temperature. These climates arid and semi-arid cover nearly 26 percent of the earth's land area of which 12 percent is under arid climates. Grasslands of semi-arid climates are cultivated in a very organized manner and the resources of arid climates are also extracted vigorously. Problems of ecological imbalances are noticed in these climates. Several efforts have been initiated to tackle these problems, but a judicious way of human activities are the sole solution in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much.